As we continue our theme of Respect Life Month, I want to talk about euthanasia. Aside from abortion, this is one of the biggest issues in the Respect Life movement. You know, so often in our society, people argue that we should be allowed to euthanize people at the end of their life because it seems to be a compassionate and caring way to allow somebody to end their life. And oftentimes people will say, and it allows them to end their life with dignity. They don't have to go through the great suffering that we so often associate with the end of life, especially in situations where we're tempted to say that euthanasia would be a good option. The problem with this is I think it ignores some very sound theology. First of all, it ignores the fact that we are made in the image and likeness of God. It treats human beings as if we are any other animal. And then the second thing is it denies the efficacious value of suffering. It seems to say that human suffering has no value and all it is is something to be lamented. And both of these things are things that the Catholic Church would rail against. When we talk about suffering, I do want to be clear that the goal of our lives, even though we say it's got a redemptive value, is not to seek out suffering. And certainly we should alleviate it when we can, but within the proper parameters. In other words, you know, we can't end a life just to alleviate some suffering. However, we can tell other people that they might have to make some sacrifices in order to alleviate sufferings of other people. So we might tell somebody they have to make financial sacrifices so that we can help to feed the hungry or provide medicine to the poor or something of that effect. However, what we don't do is say that we can end the suffering of somebody at the end of their life. And, and here's why. Again, we're made in the image and likeness of God, so we're different from other creatures such as dogs and cats or other animals that we so often euthanize because we are icons of God. And as such, we have a different dignity given to us. So we always have to treat human beings differently from other animals. Now, that being said, what I want to get at is not that we're sitting here saying that, well, just because we're different, therefore we can't euthanize a human being. But we have to say, is there a value to the suffering that somebody undergoes at the end of their life. And this is some place where the Catholic Church would say, absolutely. And we pull this simply from the life of Christ. You see, what we say about Christ is that he showed us how to most fully live a human life, how to most properly live as human beings in this world. And one of the things we realize is he did not shun suffering, including at the end of his life. He openly and willingly accepted his passion that, it, that led up to his crucifixion and ultimately his death. And because of that, we say that this passion of his, this suffering that he went through, must have some kind of value. And certainly we see that in the resurrection, that through his cross and suffering, that he was able to bring the resurrection to its full meaning, to take on this sacrifice that he made uh, for the salvation of all the world, and therefore to see it brought to its fulfillment in the resurrection, where the whole world now has the possibility of redemption. And so the sacrifice that Christ made, that suffering, was not without merit. The same thing is true of our sufferings. Now, what some people will object and say, no, no, Christ's suffering was different because his suffering was efficacious for the whole world, but therefore we don't need to suffer. You see, the problem with that is that it doesn't allow us to unite ourselves with Christ. You see, the point of Christ being here on the earth is so that we can enter into this intimate union with him, that we can be joined to him. You know, this is seen in Catholic theology in the Eucharist so clearly, where we take Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity, who is really, truly present in the sacrament, and we incorporate him into our bodies. There's this sense in which we want to be united to Christ in a very real way. And that means that we have to be united to him, not only in the joys, but in the sufferings. Now again, we're talking about the sufferings that we can't do anything about. Christ willingly embraced that suffering of the cross. Partially, you know, it was a suffering that he couldn't do anything about. Now again, certainly as God, he, he could have done something about it, I suppose. But in living the, his humanity to its fullest extent, it was beyond his control. And we see this clearly in the garden where he's praying to the Father, saying, um, your will, not my will, be done. Again, this is not saying that 
Christ had a different will from the Father, but rather saying that in his humanity, Christ doesn't sit here and say, oh, I wish to suffer because it sounds like so much fun. He's not seeking out his passion. Rather, he's embracing it as part of the will of the Father. And that's the same thing that we are called to do at the end of our lives when we encounter suffering, is to embrace it and understand that this is a way of uniting ourselves to Christ. In other words, it helps us to become more closely united with Christ. And ultimately, that's our goal, is to share eternal life with him in heaven, to be united with him in heaven. And we do that by being united with him here on earth. So we are united with him when we do good deeds, because they are united to the good deeds that Christ himself did. We're also united to him when we suffer, because our suffering is united to the suffering of Christ. And therefore, it has value because it's a participation in that Paschal mystery. It's a participation in the sufferings that brought about redemption for the whole world. And so when we suffer, we don't say that we're doing it just because I want to trudge through something or I want to offer something to God. We say, not only am I offering something to God, but I'm offering something that's efficacious because it's connected, it's united with the sufferings of Christ. And if we have that attitude, then our sufferings all of a sudden become efficacious for the salvation of the world. They help to profit the world for salvation. And for this reason, we can't end a life just because that person doesn't want to suffer. Rather, what we need to do is encourage people to unite their sufferings in a very real way with the sufferings of Christ, to see what they are going through, not as something just merely to be lamented, but rather as something that somehow profits the world for salvation, that somehow is a participation in that great suffering of Christ, which brought about redemption to the world. And so for those reasons, the Catholic Church says it's not an option to euthanize a human being. Not only does it treat them like any other creature and ignore their dignity, but it also denies the world of the true benefits that come from human suffering when that human suffering is united to the suffering of Christ. And for these reasons, the Catholic Church says it's important to respect the dignity of every human being from the moment of conception to the moment that they die naturally, even if that means that those end moments are going to be wrought with suffering, because that suffering has a dignity to it. That suffering helps to profit the world for salvation, because it unites people to Christ.